so hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video and in this video i will be covering problem d that is friendly spiders from round 843 and this problem was quite easy if you guys know a small trick so let's move on to the solution and see how we can solve this but before we move on to the solution i want to tell you guys about newton schools coding contest as you guys know newton schools does this coding contest every month and this month the name of the contest is code rush x and the prizes are better than ever before so you can win prizes up to rupees 10 lakhs and along with this you can win placement opportunities in top product companies so like if you guys want to play this for fun or you guys want to play this for placements that is totally up to you uh, the contest will be on 28th of january uh, it will start around 9 pm and the contest will be three hours long so there will be ample amount of time for you guys to brainstorm and solve good quality problems so if you guys want to benchmark yourself or just win some placements, this is a very good opportunity. I will leave a link to this contest in the comments and in the description so you guys can go and sign up from there and show or you can flex how good you are at problem solving. So now let's move on to the solution. So in the problem, we have been given some number of spiders. Uh, number of spiders are n, where your value n can go up to 10 to the power 5. And every spider has some number of legs. These number of legs are given by an array A. So A1 is the number of legs that spider 1 has. Similarly A2, A3, so on up to AN. Now there is a friend network among the spiders. Two friends I and J are said to be friends. So two spiders I and J are said to be friends. If GCD of AI, comma AJ is greater than 1. Or basically you can say that if your AI and aj share a common factor right if ai and aj share a common factor there will be a friendship between spider i and spider j now if two uh, spiders are friends they can share a message among each other so you can share a message from i to j and j to i and you have been given two indexes or you can say you have been given two numbers of some spiders right so you have been given some index of spider s and you have been given some index of a spider t and you want to pass a message from s to t and to do this you have to find the shortest path that you will take to deliver the message from s to t or report minus one if it's impossible so given some source spider and some target spider you have to find the shortest path to deliver message from S to T. Right, not path, huh? path. And report minus one if it's impossible. So let's see how we can solve this. Now at first glance, this seems like a very easy problem, right? Because you can just do a brute force. For every spider i, for every spider i, you can find all its friends, right? Find all its friends. And you can add the edges, right? And you can add the edges. Basically, you can form the graph or the friend network. And after you are done with forming the graph or the friend network, you can just do a BFS to find the shortest path from S to T. And that will be your entire solution. But this will obviously not work. Uh, now, why not? So to show this, let's take a small example to show why this will not work. So let's say you have, you have five spiders. We have spider one, spider two, spider three, spider four and spider five. Let's say number of legs are 2, 4, 6, 8 and 10. So as you can see here, every uh, spider has even number of legs. So you can see that every spider has a common factor with every other spider, right? So basically what I'm trying to say is that in this case, all the spiders will be friend with each other. In this case, all the spiders will be friends with each other. So if you try to draw the graph for this, it will look something like this. 
we will have five spiders one two three four and five one will be a friend of every spider two will be a friend of every spider three will be a friend of every spider and four will be a friend of every spider so in total there will be nc2 edges which is basically of order n square right so like our graphs can be very dense right so in this kind of like a configuration our graphs can be very dense what i mean by dense is that your number of edges by dense i mean that your number of edges can go up to order of n square right and if you guys are familiar with bfs time complexity of bfs time complexity of bfs is number of vertices plus number of edges here number of vertices are just n but our graphs can get dense and our and if our graphs get dense our number of edges can go up to n square so uh, so our time complexity of bfs can also go up to o of n square so like if you do the brute force approach it will tle so we have to do something smarter here so now how can we optimize this so here comes the trick so i learned this trick in or i saw this trick in one of utkarsh gupta stream so if you guys don't know who utkarsh gupta is uh, like he is the top coder of india so i saw this trick in one of his streams and we can use that trick to simplify this graph you can say right so let's redraw the graph again and see how we can simplify this so we have uh, five spiders right 1 2 3 4 and 5 and it has 2 4 6 8 and 10 right if you try to draw the brute force graph it will contain o of n square edges so like what if we simplify it let's say we draw like some special nodes so we have five nodes for the spiders 1 2 3 4 and 5 let's say we draw some special nodes which are basically the prime factors right uh, for example 2 has the prime factor of 2 so we can draw a new node 2 here and we can connect spider 1 with this node right similarly for 4 we have 2 into 2 so we can also connect this with our special node 2 for 6 we have 2 into 3 so it has prime factors 2 and 3 so it will connect with 2 and 3 so let's create the new node 3 so this is our special node 2 3 so our third spider will have edge to 2 and edge to 3 similarly our node 8 has 2 into 2 into 2 so it will have a edge with 2 only and similarly our spider 5 our spider 5 has factor 2 into 5 as factor 2 into 5 so let's create a new node for 5 so our 5 will have a edge to 2 and 5 right so as you can see previously our graph had o of n square edges but in this case our every number our every number ai every number ai can have around log of ai factors log of ai factors so in this case our edges will go from n square to n log n you can say right so our number of edges will go from n square to n log n and now we can apply bfs now you can make some argument that when we decrease the number of edges from n square to n log n maybe some kind of information was lost but it is easy to see that all the information was still intact for example if we see in the first graph there is a connection from node 1 to node 5 and if we uh, if we see in our new graph there is still a connection first we go from node 1 to the special node 2 and then we go from this special node 2 to, to our node 5 so there is still a path from node 1 to node 5 the only difference is there are some intermediate nodes now and these intermediate nodes are helping us to decrease the number of edges right so all the information or all the paths that were there in graph 1 will still be there in graph 2 the only difference is there will be some intermediate nodes in between the paths right so now we have decreased our number of edges from n square to n log n so now we can simply run a bfs from n uh, our bfs from s to t right 
and if there is a path you can print that path otherwise report minus one if it's impossible right so that is the entire solution and if you guys want to see the pseudocode for this so let's write the pseudocode as well so uh, for every spider right so for every i going from one to n look out for the prime factors look out for the prime factors of ai and make a edge make a edge from ai to that prime factor now to make sure that like there are not some clashes for example here we are making a special node 2 but our node 2 is already being used by this spider so we can add some kind of offset right so let's say we add some uh, add some offset here for example let's say our prime factor 2 is given by some node that is uh, 3 into 10 to the power 5 plus 2 right so this 3 into 10 to the power 5 will make sure that we are not reusing some other node right so this 3 into 10 to the power 5 will be a decent offset this will make sure that our node is special or not right so we can add a edge from ai to the prime factor plus some offset and i am keeping the offset as 3 into 10 to the power 5 let's say right so for every i from 1 to n uh, find the prime factors of ai and add a edge from ai to that prime factor then we have a graph then you can then you can just run a bfs from s to t then just count the number of nodes count the number of nodes on path s to t such that uh, your like uh, your node value your node value is less than offset right because when you find the path from s to t these like special nodes will also be in the path but we don't like need to add these to the path right so when you go from s to t you can you can ignore these special nodes right so only count the nodes if your value of node is less than offset or you can say that if your node is not special then only count it otherwise ignore it otherwise ignore so if you do this now you can solve your problem in n log n and that will be the entire solution so if you guys want to see the code for this uh, here is the code as well so i will keep a sieve so i will use my sieve to factorize my numbers right and this is called the shortest prime factor sieve so you can look it up online uh, this is used to factorize number in log n right so i will uh, take input as my source and target and my value n i will take my vector as the input then i will go over all the numbers from 1 to n and i will like prime factorize them and add edges from i to max n is my offset right so max n plus the prime factor uh, and then I will like uh, keep on factorizing my number, right? So I will basically am adding edges here from my node i to the prime factor. Then after that, I can just run a BFS from node s to node t. And in the end, if my node is not reachable, then I will just print out minus one. If my node, if my node is reachable, then I can go over uh, the path. So I will keep a parent that will help me to find the path. So I will go over the path. If my node is less than n, that means if my node is not special, I will push back it into the path otherwise uh, then i will like uh, find the parent of that node and do the same thing right and if my node is like greater than n then i can just ignore it right then i can just reverse the path and print it and my number of nodes will be distance of target plus one by two and just print out the path and that will be the entire solution so if you guys have some doubts feel free to ask in the comments or the join me discord server i'll be more than happy to answer your doubts there and i will see you guys in the next one Bye bye